Waterfowl hunting is an exciting and challenging sport. Most waterfowl and crane hunters are avid sportsmen with strong conservation ethics and good wildlife identification skills. These hunters face extra challenges in the central flyway. Here are several species of non-game birds, including endangered whooping cranes, share habitats with geese and sandhill cranes. We get, of course, snow geese, Ross geese, uh, speckle bellies, Canada geese, sandhill cranes, and then all sorts of ducks. It's a good idea for the hunters to get out in the field before they go hunting and learn what other species are out there as well, and learn the different species of geese that they'll be hunting. Even the most experienced hunter sometimes faces challenges in identifying fast-flying birds, especially in fog or poor light. Early one morning, we had several groups of young Ross geese work us, and they were flying about six feet off the ground, coming in real low and fast. And, you know, I was calling the shot, and we killed a few of them, and a group of ibis came in. And actually, I called the shot on them, but I took it back just as soon as I said the words. This video presents a series of short quizzes to help you, the hunter, improve your identification skills and make the right decision when determining whether you should shoot or don't shoot. Geese are real vocal. They talk pretty much all the time. If you can hear them, you know, snow geese, they honk, and Canada's cluck, and specks yodel, and Ross geese chirp, you know, just listen for the birds. This first quiz includes some snow and blue geese, as well as several other species of white birds that are similar to snow geese in size and flock formation. As each clip appears, you make the call. <laughs> As these snow geese approach, you can clearly see the black wing tips, short legs, and compact body that help you identify this popular game bird. Their profile can be described as chunky and pear-like. White ibis are common birds in the hunting field, but don't let the white color and black wing tips fool you. Cattle egrets often fly in tight flocks and approaching from the side can fool you. They don't have black wingtips, however, and their wing beat is slower than that of snow geese. Even when poor light doesn't allow you to see the colors clearly, you can use other features, such as the calls of geese and their steady, quick wing beats to help you identify them. Again, it's a flock of light and dark birds. However, ibis fly with a flap and glide pattern, often in a long line that undulates. The second quiz includes additional white birds that might be confused with snow geese. While several of these species are much bigger, note that similar color patterns could make a hasty shooting decision be the wrong shooting decision.
wood storks may be seen early in the hunting season. They are white with black wing tips, but they are much bigger than snow geese. They also have a heavy bill, extensive black on the head and wings, and trailing legs. They look nose heavy in profile. Swans occasionally occur in snow goose habitat, but they are much bigger, lack black on the wings, and have a different call. Their wing beat is slower than geese, and they tend to fly as singles, pairs, or in very small groups. They are teardrop sleek in profile. If you know your bird calls, then you can make the correct shot on these snow geese. Just make sure that you have enough visibility to detect any larger, non-game species that might be mixed in. Sometimes, white pelicans are found up high in large flocks. Watch for the circling, soaring flight. In profile, this bird is very chunky looking, with extra black on the wings, a folded neck, and of course, a long beak. Great egrets are usually found as singles or in small groups. Watch for the folded neck in flight, lack of black wingtips, trailing legs, and slow wing beat. In profile, think of them as a gangly dart. The endangered whooping crane is another white water bird with black wingtips, but they are much larger and have long trailing legs. Watch for the strong, steady wing beat and the larger size. These birds, long and graceful in profile, usually are found in very small groups, but sometimes fly and share habitats with geese and other cranes. In addition to white birds, there are several dark non-game birds that might be confused with dark geese. In quiz number three, you decide whether you're seeing a blue goose, Canada goose, white-fronted speckle-belly goose, or some other species that might not be so desirable in your bag. Many birds of prey are often found near waterfowl concentrations. Watch for the gliding, hovering flight, the very short neck and longer tail to pick out hawks and falcons. The long-billed curlew is a dark shorebird found in wetland habitats. Once again, pear-shaped in profile, with short legs, the overall dark body coloration and voice of the Canada goose can help you identify it. The goose-sized cormorant is a fish-eating bird. Watch for the slightly heavier head and bill, solid dark coloration and somewhat slower flight speed. White-fronted geese are slightly lighter in color than Canada geese and are often mixed in with snow geese flocks. If you can glimpse those bright orange feet, then you can make a positive ID. Finally, you get a chance to go crane hunting. Sandhill crane hunting, that is. In quiz number four, you'll see some species that might appear similar to sandhill cranes.
Great blue herons, like great egrets, have a folded neck in flight, trailing legs, and slow wing beat. They're usually found alone or in groups of less than 10. Their profile can be described as a gangly dark dart. In contrast to the herons, sandhill cranes have a strong, steady wing beat, dark wingtips, and a purring, rattle-like call. They are rarely solitary, occurring mostly in large flocks of 10 or more. Their profile is like that of a sleek arrow. Two other herons, the tricolored and little blue, are found in wetland habitats. But like the great blue heron, they fly alone or in small groups with a slower, more erratic wing beat. Crane hunters have a special responsibility to make sure the light and sky conditions allow them to differentiate between sandhill cranes and the endangered whooping crane. Let's take a look and see how quick decisions can be difficult. Don't count on silhouettes when crane hunting. Sandhill cranes and whooping cranes are similar in size and profile, and even in voice. Make sure there is enough light to see whether the crane is white, like these whooping cranes, or gray with dark wingtips, like the sandhill crane. Sandhill crane or whooping crane. Only good light and conservative shot distances will allow you to make safe choices. Whooping crane's calls are somewhat stronger and higher than sandhill cranes, but it's best to hold that shot in poor light. These sandhill cranes look light colored until seen at closer range. It's better to be safe than sorry when making a shooting decision. Frequently, whooping cranes, especially whooper chicks that have been separated from their parents, may fly with sandhill cranes. The rusty brown whooper chicks may not appear very distinct from the gray sandhill cranes in poor light. The issue of whooping crane protection is very important for both goose and crane hunters in the central flyway. Whoopers often migrate with sandhills and may sometimes fly among geese, so hunters must be sure before they shoot. There is much that individual crane and goose hunters can do to ensure conservation of both our game and non-game treasures. Before heading out, review identification tips in the Waterfowl Hunting Digest or take a few minutes to review this video. In the field, continue to study sizes, shapes, behaviors, and flight patterns. Careful, critical thinking based upon two or more criteria will reduce the risk of calling the wrong shot. Take him, take him now. Take him, get out front of him. Good, good shot, good shot. <laughs> if you have doubt, let him go. If there's any doubt at all, just hold off and just wait. When in doubt, just sit back and watch the bird work the spread or work your decoys and enjoy the hunt. With proper knowledge and care in the field, 
waterfowl and crane hunters can continue to boast that they have played their part to conserve all migratory birds for generations to come.